Hello, viewers. I'm SB. And I am Amabelle. And welcome back to Amabelle Goes to 4X School, uh, the episode where I don't rant at length for 20 minutes about hardly anything. Yeah, don't be muscling out of my territory. <laughs> it did. It did feel like it did feel like I was biting your style. Um, so I went and had a look. Apparently, in base Civ Six, you can get shared vision from any alliance, and that is how it has worked in Civilization games in the past, where there weren't different kinds of alliances. Just allying with somebody gave you shared vision. Um, with the expansions, it was changed so that you only get shared vision from military alliances and only from the upper levels of them. Oh. So we did not have the, we, we couldn't have gotten shared vision even if we had made the alliance because we would have had, we needed, would have needed time for it to go up to level two at the very least. It's fine. Uh, hey, Wilfred, do you want to, do you want to maybe make an alliance here? We could, we could do an alliance with you. Perhaps. Perhaps a military alliance. See, he's in good. He's in good standing with her. I don't think he's gonna join us in this battle. So maybe just like an economic alliance. I like. I feel yeah. like. I feel like we're going to be able to basically be chill with him for a while. Yeah. And I want him to like us better than he likes her. I want him to have more of a tie to us than he has to her. Yeah. Maybe I should. Maybe it should be a military alliance. Maybe he'll get the idea. Okay. I, I kind of. You know what? <clears throat> would you do it? He would do it for actually a, quite a small amount of money. All right. We have a great and powerful military alliance. Okay. And now I think we're just gonna denounce her because I'm pretty sure. Declaring a surprise war is not a cool way to it's not it's not the good way to go in the eyes of the, the international community. And I'm pretty sure we're not hitting this golden age. So let's just go ahead and denounce her. A time will come when you pay for your misdeeds, she says. Add to that a time when your name will live only as the villain of comical verse. Alright. All right. It would be totally sick if we could get four era score, but I don't know how we would do it at this point. Four, you know, four is just enough that, like, if you really, if you really marshal your resources, there are some things you can do to earn three. Um, four is tough. Uh, man wants our resources. I don't. I don't know that I care about. Oh no, sorry, that's the nighter. Yeah, I was I was thinking, I was thinking we have two resources I don't care so much about, uh, but that's not one of them. No, you can't have my nighter. Go fix your. I like the way he rolled his eyes. Yeah, they have a lot of personality. I do I do like the um. I do like the leaders, in this version and, and of Save quite a bit. And that that does kind of that does fit Alexander who. You know, he is, what, 30 when he died? 29? Ooh, plus 20 religious strength in theological combat. All right, that guy's going to he's gonna do some good work for us. Uh, they have finally abandoned our holy site, which I appreciate. Can we now buy a guy in the holy site? Well, or? no, we just did. We, we don't have the currency okay. for that. Gotcha. We have enough faith to purchase a missionary or something. Unit that I'm less excited about. Uh, once they've moved a little bit further away from us, I will, I will, we can only, you can only heal your religious units in a holy district. Yeah. Uh, but if I go out there right now, I'm just going to get mobbed and murdered before I have a chance. So I'm going to leave that for next turn. It is still possible for us to gain vision of a natural wonder. You know, maybe maybe our dude here will happen across something, and if that happened, it would it would be awfully helpful. But I think we have like one turn left, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, we have this scout here. I guess this scout should probably be um should probably be going with that settler. 
If I had been running my scouts around on the continent, for some reason I thought there was a higher level of tech you needed beyond caravels to move your land units across deep water. Otherwise, we could have had scouts on this continent earlier. All right, our armory is finished. Uh, Chigag has erupted. That is a volcano that we just became aware of. We have met Armagh. What's your deal, Armagh? Your builders can now make monastery improvements, is the uh, suzerain bonus here. Monasteries provide bonus faith, plus healing for friendly religious units on this tile, plus faith for every two adjacent districts, provides housing, receives an additional housing once colonialism is discovered. That's okay. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Um, a thing that's worth noting here is that Mansa Musa is the current suzerain with nine envoys. So I guess there must have been some real fighting going on over, over Armagh. Um, I'm not going to bother putting an envoy in here. I don't care that much about the, like the two or three extra faith. And I want to okay. keep, I would really like to keep the suzerain bonus of the, um, of Singapore. So I'm keeping an envoy in supply just in case somebody tries to take that from us. Yeah. Okay, they moved far enough south that I'm no longer as concerned. I'm gonna get over here and start up the start up the rest and repair. And now, like we have to be a little careful here because I don't, I don't obviously, I don't want to let them gang up on my, my debater apostle here, but we are pretty good at combat. Wait, why is this pillaged? When did this get pillaged? This got, it was the flood, right? Ah. Uh, Babylon can now produce military engineers, right? Yeah. You can construct roads, railroads, forts, airstrips, missile silos, and mountain tunnel improvements. One of their build charges can also be used to complete 20% of a canal, dam, or aqueduct, or a flood barrier. Wow. Okay. That's a useful critter. Let's get that built, because we know what we're doing with it. So Armog would really like us to destroy the barbarian outpost that is bothering them. Uh, I think that's somewhat unlikely to occur. So yeah, if we run over here... No, you know what? We can do this because there is a river between us and most of their other apostles. They won't be able to actually gang up on us real quick here. So we can we can do this and, um, and create a an ugly situation for them. We need more traders. None of our cities are actually producing traders right now. The museums that we're building are important. And Mashka and Shapir does need to be building this stuff. But we also need traders. The 385? Okay. I need to, I need to be buying traders, apparently. So I'm curious what they're going to do here. Okay, they're, they're, they're making like they are going to fight us, but they cannot actually fight us yet. The world enters the industrial era. Let's make our dedication. Sadly, couldn't quite get there. Uh, dark Ages for Canada and Mali, and Normal Ages for everybody else. So, gain plus one era score each time you kill a non-barbarian core in combat, and two each time you kill a non-barbarian army in combat. I don't know that our opponents have the ability to form these advanced kind of trade things, or these advanced kind of military units. Okay. Uh, we are no longer going to be able to discover new continents. I think we've discovered all of the continents. One era score for each industrial or later building constructed is kind of interesting, but I might want to just reform the coinage, honestly. Like, we have seven trade route slots right now, so this will just be a, a, a constant drip of era score. I don't know exactly how much of this is going to be happening, because we technologically we're, we're advancing in a very like weird, uneven way. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to take reform the coinage as our dedication. Uh, 
Uh, Nan Madal has declared war on Mogadishu. It looks to me like a city-state changed suzerains probably is what's happening here. There's a bunch of a bunch of uh, declaring peace and declaring war all next to each other like that. So it looks like I can probably just knock this guy out entirely. Oh dear. That's a barbarian musket man. My skirmisher does not actually want to engage in combat with this uh with this set of barbarians. They are <laughs> they are a problem. Well, I guess let's just keep exploring the oceans then for the moment. And yeah, the trade units are important. Everything's important. There's so, there's so much stuff going on. It's fine. We're just going to buy traders in Mashka and Shapir to fill out our extra slots. England has completed development of nationalism. Well, that's very English. It is very English. So that means they're here culturally. Uh, and that is definitely a war focused, um, a war focused civic. Okay. To be aware of. All right. Should make sure we're actually exploring all the way to the north here. Okay. Uh, do I want you to come home? I was going to have this unit come back and help fight, but this unit's so effective at combat that I think what I'm going to do is have this unit just spend its last spread, actually. Okay. Flip this city back to giant crab time. Yeah. Ah, okay. So Toronto, in a dark age, your cities only, or your citizens only produce, it's either point set, it's either 75% or 50% of the normal amount of loyalty. So at this point, with his city only having five population in it and only receiving half pressure from the nearby Halifax, um, our large amount of pressure from, from population is actually giving him problems. And he moved that governor out of the city because things were stabilized without her. So he's going to have to make a decision as to what he wants to do on that front now. Now, if Toronto decides it wants to, to flip... If Toronto wants to leave Canada, yeah, yeah, what ha what will happen is it will leave Canada. It will it will become independent, and then from there, um, it might be influenced into joining someone else, uh, us. Is that a thing you have agency over though? Could you refuse to let them join? Do you? That's a that's a I, I believe I believe you have to press a button to. Um, to accept them in, yeah, you can't just people can't just decide they're part of your country. So that would that would probably irritate him. Well, it won't be his Canada. it won't be his city at that point. Okay, he just won't care. Science owes more to the steam engine than the steam engine owes to science. So it's like there's just there's, there's no memory of that then. I don't know. I don't know. He may have. He may in fact have a huge problem with that. I don't know. Okay. We'll see if it, you know, we'll see. Okay. So bonus movement for embarked units is a thing we just uh, learned how to do thanks to steam engines. We're going to keep bullying their apostles. Although at some point pretty soon here, we're going to have to fall back into a defensive posture because we're spending a lot of health. All right, just getting some vision all up in their territory. We're allowed to be here. It's fine. We negotiated for it. Um, I really want to knock out a workshop as well before we go doing anything else in Mashkan Shapir here. Uh, and this is a turn where we get to purchase ourselves a trader as well. Okay, Barbarian Outpost, not a big deal. I can purchase an Apostle this turn and think I shall. Uh, now, maybe maybe I've gone too far with this guy. I did let him get really low. 
I think we're going to buy the Apostle, though, in Mashkan Shapir. Actually, hmm. <laughs> how much do what? I care about this? About giant crab time? Well, I mean, I'm talking about how much do I care about trying to fight with her to distribute giant crab time via religion when we're so close to just declaring open war? Well, what would you be doing with the faith resource otherwise? I might buy a museum. <laughs> okay. We do not yet have an archaeological museum. We're about to discover natural history, which, which is normal to do. Uh, someone should talk to Plutarch about that. I'm going to do I'm going to do it. I'm going to get us a museum. I think we're going to. Well, hold on. We could. No, I, I think I'm going to do this because I think we're going to we're going to just knock her stuff out with violence instead. And then we'll spread our religion afterward. Okay. Had I been present at the creation, I would have given some useful hints for the better ordering of the universe. Okay, so we've discovered archaeology, basically. With your people enthused to try natural history, government and social policy changes are free this year. Cool, thanks. <laughs> um... So religious orders is like potentially a thing that we're that we're trading out. Okay. And we're maybe thinking about actual military stuff. Uh, if we were to do that, if we were to go into military mode, plus four combat when a non-religious unit fights a civilization that follows another religion. I think this would come in, probably over top of okay. conscription or like over top of religious orders. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the good production stuff for the for the for this era because it's attached to nationalism. So that's something we would have to go get. But it might be time to go get it. And I'm debating whether, like, we want logistics or, like, do I want bastions for the bonus city range strength to help the cities clear out, to help um, Mushkan Shapir specifically clear out the enemies up there. Logistics and conscription are both relevant. We can we can take the hit on gold for, you know, for the just in case here. I'm going to do that. Okay, so the fact that we finished natural history uh, reveals antiquity sites as a resource in the world map. It also awards us a bunch of envoys. Uh, do we see any antiquity? Okay, yeah, so here, like, if we send archaeologists to antiquity sites, we can uh, discover artifacts, and those artifacts will also produce culture and tourism. They're basically another kind of great work. This is a, a kind of great work that is focused on um, you know, discovering history rather than uh, rather than the production of great people. Okay. So in any city where we have an archaeological museum, we will have the ability to um, produce archaeologists. Right now that's just Mashkan Shapir. We may build such museums in other places in the future. Okay. Now, we were kind of headed in the general direction of conservation, which I think is a, mm -hmm. is a good one overall. But now that we are looking down the barrel of a war, it may behoove us to grab some other stuff. Uh, we don't. We don't even have diplomatic service yet. Um. Hmm. I hate to be like, now that we're looking down the barrel of a war, let's turn to nationalism. But <laughs> bonus production toward ended. industrial area units sure would be. And that does how is how it happens historically. <laughs> All right. Well, we're getting pretty close to boosting this. By you declaring war using a cast of spell eye. All right. 
let's head in that direction. We got ourselves some envoys here. Placing a couple of their, a couple more envoys in Mogadishu would get us extra gold in every shipyard, and we have constructed a couple of shipyards. We're already working on constructing a couple more, so it's not mm -hmm. a small bonus. Um, like I say, I really like the bonus we're getting from Singapore, so I do want to like hold on to at least a. Yeah, and the the person, the other person who has envoys here is only one envoy behind us. So I'd like to hold on to a couple envoys to be able to just drop in there if they challenge us on that one. Mm -hmm. Um. See, so yeah, I think for the moment we maybe just hold on to this. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, leveling up Don Madal is also interesting now that we actually have museums. This is a yeah. fair amount of bonus culture. You know, okay, I'll drop two there. We'll hold on to one for defense. Okay. I do want I do want the extra culture. This is this is such a fucking melodramatic version of this song. Yeah. It's, it's so I, just just ridiculous. And it's hard I, it's hard I, to know how tongue in cheek it is. I think they probably they're probably aware of what they're doing. I appreciate how the instrumentation changes with the era. That's yeah. a nice touch. Yeah, I agree. Like to be clear, I do think that presentationally, they're super on their game. Like they, they do a great job with the presentational elements of this stuff. Yeah, no, I, I agree there. Um, I hope when we get to like the future era or whenever when we're doing like base rockets, that we get like a, a, a synth version. Is what I would like. <laughs> so we're pretty close to declaring war on. London. Uh, we are not currently trading with uh, with Canada, so keep in mind we have uh, we have a bonus to production for each civilization that the city has a trade route to. So all the routes to Canada effectively have plus two production attached to them because the city's not trading with Canada yet. My inclination is to go food and industry, even though this is not the most yield we could possibly get. But okay. does the the path to Quebec City does run through England, which I don't love. Cause that's about to become aggressive territory. So I think we may want to like make the run to ugh, the run to Ottawa takes the same path. I really want to do one that has a point of industry attached to it already. Because without the extra point of industry, you know, we could just like run it internally and get, yeah. get to industry. I would love to. What I would really like is to be able to trade with people on the other continent. But unfortunately, they don't have any coastal cities on the appropriate coast. Uh, we might be able to run trade from Dur Kuragalzu to, um, to, to Jenny, maybe. Or to Timbuktu, even. Timbuktu is right on that coast. But I'm trying to generate industry for Mashkan Shapir for obvious reasons. So I think what we're going to do is maybe just like run the world's shortest trade route to Malgium. Because <laughs> it gives us the food and industry. Okay. If we wanted to run a trade route to Canada that stayed on the ocean, it would just be Toronto or Kingston. Kingston gives us a culture and a fair amount of money. Toronto is tiny, but somehow incredibly valuable. That's weird. What about Winnipeg? 12 money, a science, and a culture, and that would run entirely over the ocean. Yeah, all right. Let's run a trade route to a friend. So we have up here a naval unit that is actually fairly high strength. Um, if we close this panel, this caravel is 55 combat strength. So like when when war is declared, we actually can do some damage to the to their coastal cities on this side. It's not like totally ideal, but it's something. Yeah. All right. 
we're just gaining vision, we're learning things. Um, we are able to construct districts. So, okay, this tile does not belong to Maljim right now, but it could. And if this tile belonged to Maljim, we could, we could, we could swap it in and then we could build an encampment here. And we could threaten the pass that way without having to spend Mashka and Shapir's encampment. Okay. That's kind of interesting, actually. That's not what I was thinking of doing with this slot, but... But maybe that's interesting. Um, so yeah, give me control of this. And I will, for you, construct an encampment in this place. Sort of a goofy war. We're, we're, we're building up to kind of a goofy war. So then for Mashka and Shapir, the encampment probably goes here, is my thinking. Yeah. So that would give us, that would give us um, the ability to fire into the only ocean space adjacent to the city. And fire on these tiles adjacent. The The encampment has to go at least two tiles away. You can't build it adjacent. And then it also covers the area all the way to the mountain in case, I don't know, anything should ever occur from this direction. In case anyone ever gets any bright fucking ideas. Not that I'm not fully devoted to this alliance or anything. I wouldn't want anyone to think that. It's just, yeah. you know. Alright. We finished a trade route. That's worth air score. Okay, this flooded, but not the part of it that's near us. That's fine. Got ourselves another great person. It's a great engineer. Grants 315 production toward the construction of a wonder. Okay, welcome aboard. Um, we will just hold on to you for a while. I don't really know what I want to do with that. Our settler's long journey is nearly complete. I, I have a I have a gross question. Sure. Hit me Can with a you gross trade question. great people? I don't know that off the top of my head. Because we know someone who wants to construct wonders. Okay, so hold on. We have to we have to build forts. How does a how does a fort maybe I should have looked this up? <clears throat> forts. These come from the Siege Tactics technology, which I should have checked that we have. We don't. <clears throat> Own two trebuchets. All right, well, we're working on it. Well, this is what we'll use this guy's builds for when we get there eventually. It didn't even occur to me to look because I was like, well, of course we'll have, like, how could we not? But no, in fact, we do not. So we could build a wonder really fast with our great engineer. Let's have a look at what okay. wonders might be interesting. Uh, so you'll see that wonders that we've picked up very recently have like a cost of 920 production. This fellow has two charges of 315 production. So in fact, Filippo Brunelleschi, Brunelleschi maybe, um, is gonna, he's gonna build two thirds of a modern wonder. Um, we could still build Oxford. Two randomly chosen free technologies, some great works of writing slots. Now, is someone else trying to build that already? Is that what that little... No, that's right that's our little... Uh, that's your the advisor. Oh, okay. The advisor AI to give you hints if you're feeling overwhelmed by the whole thing. Um, the other thing we could do is we could build the Hermitage, which is just... A great big museum. And it certainly has some utility. Like, more places to put great works of art means easier theming, bonuses, and whatnot. But we're already... Uh, we have built three art museums. Yeah. Which is kind of the magic number. Because, like... Art museums have three slots in them. You get three art museums. You get three great artists. And you obviously you know, you're trying to you're trying to accumulate nine works such that you can build three sets of three. Um, I'm more inclined to go to Oxford and hope for good technologies. 
and he would complete approximately half of Oxford. Okay. Now, Oxford, we'd have to build Oxford here because Oxford okay. Oxford uh, needs to be built on a grasslands or plain adjacent to your campus. And that is a good tile. That is a sh the tile is a shame to, to lose. All current units gain a promotion level. All archaeologists from the owner may enter foreign lands without open borders. That's interesting. <laughs> we could rush out a terracotta army really fast. What are the what are the other things that we have access to that we just can't build here? Uh, great engineers have an additional charge, so this this requires a harbor, but the mausoleum at Halicarnassus is is a pretty good one as well. What I like about this is that um, the ar the archaeology problem people not opening their borders so you can't go and get stuff from the um, the antiquity sites can be a real problem. It can be very annoying and, and hard to deal with. Yeah. I like that a lot. And plus just, you know, extra, extra experience for all of our units. We level them up and then we still have to spend a bunch of money to like upgrade them. But part of me wants to just build the mausoleum and the terracotta army. And this guy would almost finish both of them instantly. We build the, the mausoleum and Halicarnassus over here in this area. Okay. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build. I'm gonna build two actually like kind of earlier era wonders with this guy. So come here, drop that. Two turns. Cool. Great. And then we'll spend his other charge over here. Okay. That'll be fun. Uh, there's not really much for you to do at the moment. Just kind of. I don't want to go too far from these cities for obvious reasons. That I intend to do great harm. Uh, you are sleeping, I guess. You're healing up. If this guy tries something, he will get wrecked due to the um, due to the strength difference. And also, I don't care. I think, actually, you know... Never mind. I was going to say, I think it might be the case that if they actually kill one of your religious units in theological combat, that generates a, um, a situation where you can give a warning. But um, first of all, I don't know that that's true. And secondly, I who cares? Yeah. At this at this point, who cares? Once a Musa finished the Potala Palace. A diplomat is a man who always remembers a woman's birthday, but never remembers her age. Mm. Okay, uh, so, Vistal Banking. Trade routes to an ally's city or vassal city-state provide plus two food and plus two production for both cities, and alliance points generate, uh, improve faster. This is actually, I think, a pretty good diplomatic policy. I don't know that we want to take it over Raj, but, um, it is interesting, and we're motivated to trade with other players already anyway by, um, by that, that city-state suzerain bonus mm -hmm. so it's interesting I don't think we're going to put it on right now but I think it's interesting okay the place where I want to settle is still available it's taking us forever to get there uh, and you are going to run all the way across the empire we got, we got places for you to be things for you to do let's Clear the rest of this un unviewed territory here. I cannot stand to not know what is in a place. We're about to get the Enlightenment, which is... Yeah, we're, t we're tearing through... Um, we're tearing through a lot of these like civics that are from the era before ours, because our culture output's actually really good. Yeah. There were seven wonders in the world, and the discovery of the Terracotta Army, we may say, is the eighth miracle of the world. I wonder, was there not a thing about the Terracotta Army that's actually from... It, it's, it feels weird to me to have Jacques Chirac be the one giving the quote about the Terracotta Army. Yeah. 
Uh, but all of our current military units gain a promotion are level. It's pretty good. Suspected, and usually opposed, without any other reason, but because they are not already common. All right, we get a religious tourisms are halved against us. A uh, plus one amenity to all cities with at least two specialty districts is a great policy. They've cho they've chosen to make liberalism a thing that has no effects other than making people happier and feel better. Again, words, meaning things, whatever. Uh, some policies stop existing after certain points in the game. Things things get things get uh, overwritten by other policies. Uh, so we finally lost our plus one production in each city policy, sadly. And you know what? Liberalism, mechanically, as constructed here, it's a slam dunk. You'd be foolish not to have it uh, equipped. That, yeah. <laughs> that, that's fucked. Yeah, I think we'll just uh, we'll just do that. It's it's cool when you get to construct the terms of the argument. The, the magic of capital. Uh, we're gonna take bonus combat strength versus naval units here. We're gonna have to level up each of our units. Uh, we're no longer suzerain of Hunza because somebody put their diplomat in there. What was Hunza giving us? Just some extra gold. It's not like a big deal, but like, fuck you. Yes, I am. Okay, met a new city state here. That's always fun. What's the deal with Hatusa? Uh, they would love it if we would religiously convert them. That's probably not happening. Uh, 10, Jesus, Mansa Musa, how many, how many envoys do you have, my dude? Uh, so H Hattusa provides you with two of each strategic resource that you have revealed but have not got any actual sources of, which is kind of cool. Um, and as a scientific city-state, city of course, it just gives plus science um, for the various levels of, of control. Uh, you're going to get Embalon as well. You're going to get over here and probably get on land at this point. You're technically a military unit. Plus 20 combat strength in all situations. You know what? That may be the place that we're at. You can name your um, your military units and stuff. Uh, I have not bothered, but it is a thing you can do. That's... Okay. What? It's... It's cute, but it's a, str it's a strange... Because it's not one person. You know, right, military unit. Well, it's... you wouldn't. Name, you don't name it like Sam. <laughs> you name it like, you know, the the forty first ass kickers or whatever. <laughs> okay. All right, upgrades for everybody. Um, combat strength when defending versus ranged attacks. I think there's a lot of that in your future. Double flanking bonus. More range strength. Uh, yeah. More range strength. We gotta upgrade some of these units. <laughs> get, some, get some people in our empire who are thousands of years out of date. It is 1230 AD, and this is just, this is just a horseman. We have this galley. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> is that weird? So how, That's a strange how... thing. So how close are we to declaring war? Uh, well, it turns out we're further away from the field cannons than I had hoped. Yeah. I'm working on it. The thing about it is I'm working on it. Okay. I think the human race made a big mistake at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. We leaped for the mechanical things. People need the use of their hands to feel creative. Okay, Andre Norton, fucking calm down. I haven't read Andre Norton in such a long time. I feel like no one talks about Norton's books anymore. All right, so this is, I think, well, we have some options here. I was gonna just put the mausoleum down right here real quick. I think, yeah. I, I th I think that's still the plan. 
So Ruhr Valley is actually like it's a it's a cool uh, wonder, but it requires some pretty specific situations. Uh, you have to put it along a river adjacent to an industrial zone um, that has a factory in it. We don't yet have the ability to build. Well, we just gained the ability to build factories. But our industrial zone is in a position where. Well, see, the source of the river is here. I don't think this tile will count as along the river because the river starts at its corner. Okay. And all the other tiles, like, um, and then what it does is it gives plus 20% production and also plus one to each mine and quarry in the city. Um, the other place we could build it, of course, is the capital where we have, this is our industrial zone. So we have some... We don't have a lot of mines or anything here, but we could we could build some more. I don't know, it's interesting. What we're going to be doing um, is building factories for sure. But I think this is the city where I'm gonna put down the mausoleum real quick, just make all of our future great engineers better. Oh right, the mausoleum goes on land, not on not on a water tile adjacent. Well, you know, honestly, this like three food, two gold tile, it's not that good. I think we will just build over it. Uh, yes, I'm going to continue running a route to Babylon from Mushka and Shapir because we're, we're going to have a real hard time beating the value of routes to Babylon. And you are running up here to construct most of this. Okay, that'll finish next turn. Grand. Uh, oh, I didn't take your promotion. Um, yeah, see through woods and jungle. Get even better at seeing around. Okay, I don't really know what to do with you. I don't know. I don't know. If there's a lot of utility for this caravel at the moment, unfortunately. So right now, what we're preserving money for is um, unit upgrades. A lot of a lot of out of date people who need to become mm -hmm. more powerful units. There's not a huge amount we can do about it. Um, why do you still have so many apostles? What are you doing? It's weird, like, their apostles are just, like, running around down here scouting, I guess? But they're not actually converting us. They're just running around and being weirdos. I don't know that it's worth fighting them. I'm going to send our debater up in this direction to to go make combat with the apostles that are closer to the, okay. to the critical line. All right, here comes another wonder. The tomb lies over me in Halicarnassus. Of such dimensions, of such exquisite beauty, as no other shade can boast. So you'll notice with, like, with a lot of the like ancient era wonders, I feel like it is the case that they tend to bias toward the words of people from like the West about things from the West mm -hmm. and also people from the West about things from everywhere else. Yeah. I, th I think it's definitely, I mean, it's, this is very much a Western game. Yeah. You know, um, and it would probably be interesting to see. She'd be very interested to see a Forex game that wasn't made by a Western developer. Because this this game, especially as a historical game, like it repeats the the biases of like a Western view of history and a Western view of progress, and like it's very Eurocentric ideas, very um, Eurocentric concepts, and I think it'd be really interesting to see something from somewhere else and I don't know if that I don't know enough about the genre to know if that exists if there's like I don't know uh, yeah I'm not I'm not super familiar <laughs> honestly not super familiar with output in this the, again like part of the there thing is much there just it. aren't that many this is the genre is certainly not as popular as some others right 
Yeah. Uh, okay, there's a drought up in Quebec. That's very unfortunate for them. We get a great science person. Gain 500 science for each natural wonder tile here or adjacent. You know what? That's actually really well timed. Charles Darwin, you, what a great moment for you to show up. So here we have the factory. Plus three production, plus an additional three production when additionally powered. We started building one in Mashka and Shapir already. Um, but this is the reason that I was careful about where we placed the um, industrial zone for this region or for this city. Because mm -hmm. this, the factory's production bonus extends to cities, city centers within six tiles that do not already have a bonus from this building type. Now we put down... Our thing, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so Mount Jam is actually covered by Mashka and Shapir already. Or will be. Durkar Agalgazu is getting the bonus from this. Um, and I do think that it's probably pretty important to build because Babylon itself needs the bonus. But this is this is part of what I was thinking when we, when we were um, constructing that. So, um, the thing about Charles Darwin is we have a wonder that you could stand on that is four tiles in size, he's going to generate a tremendous amount of science in a second year. Okay. Really, really huge. Uh, so I want lots of trade going into Mashkan Shapir, obviously, but it doesn't all need to be Mashkan Shapir. And I'm thinking like, I'm thinking we might be able to establish some interma international trade over here from Mari. So let's rebase this new trader to there. And to be clear, giant crab time is like the religion that believes in evolution. Yes. It's a core tenet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We believe that all things are evolving equally toward crab, <laughs> which is, uh, which is simply the a scientific fact, an observable scientific fact. Pardon me wants to declare war right now and have our caravel just go over to eat that apostle. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> so, we are allowed to declare a formal war. It has been enough time since the uh since mm -hmm. the thing. We could just we could just go to war with her and we could we could have at it. I'm a little worried about the fact that our units are not better than hers universally at the moment. Um, this horseman upgrade would require 510 gold. Upgrading you to a knight would cost 320. So, like, the, the big problem is that we have been at this level of military strength for quite some time, and she has caught up. She's essentially in the same sort of territory that we are. Yeah. In fact, she has muskets. So I really want to move up a tier of uh, of violence capability before we <laughs> before we do battle with her, and that's we're okay. working on it. Uh, Charles Darwin is going to be a tremendous help. So I think we do need to create some builders here. Um, a spy is not a bad idea. What if we made a spy? I need a builder. We have some more builder stuff to do. It's it's been a while since we've had a builder running around. Uh, nope, you are, in fact, skipping your turn. We have earned some envoys here. So this is a science in the capital and in every library. I think we will go ahead and put one envoy down for that. It's a, bit, it's a fair amount of extra science. We have some campuses and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Malgium has finished its encampment, and I'm going to build walls so that we actually have a ranged attack from that encampment. All right, so the value of Charles Darwin has, is is pretty variable. It depends a lot. Oh, stuff's happening. Somebody took Singapore, which I don't appreciate. Um, hold on. Up to five, huh? What an asshole. 
All right. Singapore has declared war on Alexander. Mogadishu is... Yeah, and everybody's declared war on Singapore because it changed sides in the war. That's annoying. So we can't make ourselves suzerain. But we can make it so there isn't a suzerain. So everybody's not at war with it. So nobody comes over and tries to conquer it. That's, that's my primary thinking there. Uh, now we need to figure out where do we want to actually put this city down. I want to put it down on the floodplains, obviously. Um, if we put it down on this side of the river, we get the cows immediately. Uh, there's this niter tile that's phenomenal. It's just like a really, really strong tile to work, and then obviously we will improve it. Um, and we get all the we get all the farms eventually. It's just a matter of like what's in the first set of, yeah. of poles. I think I think I want to set it across the river. I think I want both of the wheat tiles in the first the first set. So we're going to we're going to step across here and then we'll uh, you're going to get up on the coast and get ready to help out with this. I'm also working in case you were curious what I'm doing with this guy. I'm working him his way down here as well so that we can yeah. defend against Huh. Canada just dum dumped a city on the corner there. That's interesting. Um, they do not have the population to sustain the pressure that they're receiving from anybody around. I don't know why he thought that was a good idea to do during a dark age. He's going to lose that city if he doesn't do something fairly drastic. I mean, look, that man has had a couple thousand years to fix his hair situation and hasn't. So, like, he just doesn't make good choices. It's an anti-gravity problem. <laughs> he can't figure out how to, how to make it care about gravity. Uh, yeah, look at these, look at these long range international trade routes here. Look at this shit. Yeah. A production, 23 gold. Ooh, Ted Wenny has two production. Or T Todd Denny has two production. Mm -hmm. I think that may be what we do. Because it's actually, remember, it's actually four production with our, with our bonus that we don't currently have, but we'll have again soon, I swear. Uh, and we are working hard on nationalism, which will give us a governor title and the violence bonuses that we are looking for. Mm -hmm. When Charles Darwin uh, expends his charge next turn, we'll get access to forts. We will build forts. Let's put you in a position to build forts. How about right here? That's where you'll build the first one. Mm -hmm. We're going to get that. We're going to get that upgrade soon. So she's about to be in a spot. But first, the World Congress. Okay, 20% faster population growth, but minus five loyalty in this player's cities or vice versa. And the grievance stuff. Chosen player generates 50% fewer grievances. Might be a good thing to put on ourselves. A little, little public relations campaign as we're about to, <laughs> about to start some shit. Yeah. Uh, we do, in fact, have more diplomatic favor than everybody else. Uh, you know what? I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote me up for this. Well, actually, you know what? We could vote for population growth, but loyalty down for Canada's cities. Yeah, he'd like that. I mean, listen, he'll he'll get sassy about it, probably. But I'm, I won't put a lot of weight behind it. I, I doubt it. Like, he's he's friendly, but he doesn't really have friends. Because a friend would tell him, your hair, your look, my dude, just now. I like to think we've told him. <laughs> I made fun of it directly in front of him. That's the same thing. <laughs> I'm going to put a sixth vote on this. I would really like to generate fewer grievances. We're all friends with me except for Eleanor. Uh, oh, interesting. A lot of positive votes for me. So four four votes for you, from you. Wilfred also put, put seven in. Okay, so faster population growth but minus loyalty per turn in my cities. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, we have the population where the loyalty thing is not going to matter. Except maybe in the new city. 
But yeah. we don't receive pressure from Ethiopia, so it'll just be a matter of Mali. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We'll see. Uh, I got a diplomatic victory point there because I won a thing. We did get that, that lesser grievance generation thing. Uh, so we are going to start constructing buildings in our uh, encampment here. So the encampment buildings generate production, uh, which is great. Obviously. Uh, and they do contribute other bonuses to units built by that city. So they're just kind of, they're, they're generally pretty good. But it can be kind of tricky to like find the right time to build them. I think now is the time for us though. Let's build a barracks. So plus 25% combat experience for melee and ranged land units. This one obviously gives bonuses to cavalry and also siege units because they just had to like enforce a split somehow. I don't think we're going to be building all that many horses. I think we're going to be very focused on gunpowder type stuff. Yeah. Uh, so let's grab Darwin. Darwin comes down here and then gains 500 science for each natural wonder tile in the space he's on and adjacent. 2,000 science is going to push us way through the end of siege tactics. I'll tell you that. This as a whole is only 584 science. So what will we take after that? I have no idea. We don't need to take ballistics. Pushing through economics will get us access to like replaceable parts. On oh, three line infantry. Line infantry, a type of military unit? Yes. I, mean, I don't know about okay. it in the game, but you know, historically, yes. It is. It is this kind of military unit. So, okay, we could probably get that boost. Build a coal mine and an ironclad. We have the ability to build ironclads, but we don't have any coal right now. So I'm thinking, let's cue this. Oh, well, if we do that, shoot. We can't get that until after ballistics. I'm trying not to, to waste any of the large gift of science that is about to be placed upon us. Yeah. Ooh, refining. Refining would be a fun thing to build. We still have to we still have to get ballistics to normally research refining, even though we have the um the direct prerequisite, which is a little bit of a shame. Alright, I'm gonna press this button. The lowest is to attack it. Yep, he gives us that thing. And then when we select to do research, it's gonna dump like eleven it's gonna dump like a lot of science on it immediately. And if we don't want that science to go into ballistics, because we're about to complete ballistics in a, a different way. Like if I if I build a fort with you, why can you not build this? Has to be on a hill, right? That makes sense. Did I read that right? No, it says it can be grasslands. Huh. Not sure why I can't build this. Does it have other restrictions that it's not telling us about? Yeah, it doesn't say anything else. Like, it tells us why I can't build a railroad. We don't have coal for railroads. I don't have to have a unit already in place to build the fort, right? You know what? Maybe we do just... Maybe I just take ballistics with it. Because, like, all of the stuff we really want is on the other side of ballistics. All right, fine. We'll just grab this with the with the leftover science from what's-his-face. We'll, we'll move the military engineer up to a place where he can actually make a difference. Uh, you just hang out for a minute. We're not, we're not quite... Not quite there yet with you. Uh, you are going to put down this city and we're going to see what happens loyalty wise. All right. Rebellion in four turns. It's not great. Uh, that does not give us time to even establish a governor. 
I was figuring we'd have a little bit more time than that. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> interesting. We can't really do anything about that. The only thing we can do about that is um, when we get our next governor title, we can, you know, grab a governor. But, like, yeah, a four-turn rebellion means we can't even establish a governor to offset the loyalty loss because it takes five turns to establish a governor. Mm. I really thought this, I thought this was going to be a little bit more that that minus five loyalty per turn thing was a good defensive play from Mansa Musa, even though it looked like he was helping us. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't let's, um, let's have a look at the loyalty thing. Putting a military unit in the city might help. Of course, it doesn't just have like a list of the of the factors. That's frustrating. Most important factor is citizen pressure. Cities governor and happiness levels affect loyalty. Cities conquered with military force receive loyalty penalties. Okay, use the loyalty lens to get. Maybe we can get actual like math. Nope, it doesn't, it just doesn't, it doesn't give us, like, I want to mouse over this bar and get a listing of every effect that is occurring. One thing that is a little frustrating about Civ is that it is not very good about showing you the actual information. Um, and part of that is, you know, the intended audience is people who are not going to be able to tell the difference. Hmm. Well, well, that's fun. That's a fun bit of, you know, I, I do appreciate like the narrative texture that, that we get in the game. Yeah. You know, the, the, like, yeah, if you go found a city next to a big, it's going to maybe flip on you pretty quick. Yeah. I was hoping with you the, know. um, with the, the no pressure from the one empire thing that we would have time to establish a governor against the other empire. And you but can't four turns is too fast. And you couldn't make a similar deal with that other empire. You can only have um, each um, each alliance type. You can only have one of. Also, this okay. guy doesn't like us enough. I think probably to accept friendship. Yeah. What is Moksha doing for us right now in the in the capital over here? He is providing faith and religious pressure from the capital specifically. Attempting to assign him to the city doesn't change it, right? Well, it would change it from minus 28 to minus 20, so it would still flip pretty quickly. I was hoping we'd have time to establish a governor and then, you know, grow a little bit. Mm-hmm. But no such luck. Yeah, we have like the big city covered. It's just this, these smaller ones are. I, I'm actually really surprised, even with the minus loyalty effect that we have on us. Because there's, like, eight population that far away, and then Singapore here. Like, I'm surprised it's that much negative. Do I not understand? The effects of our alliance are that you do not exert lo loyalty pressure on my cities. Yeah, so it's just, it's just these two cities doing it. I'm shocked that it's having that much effect. I'm going to reassign him. Okay. I don't think it's going to make a difference, and it's going to cost us some faith, but I'm putting myself in a position to get lucky, basically. Like, if, if for some reason things do flip. You know, these two are at war, aren't they? Yeah. They, they were. Yeah, they currently are. You know, if he takes Weldia, or something like that, like, it, it, something could happen. And if something does happen, we'll want to have 
having a governor here will will be very helpful. Um, <laughs> do I? I don't really want to like rush. I was gonna rush by a couple of things. I don't really want to do that if we're not gonna hold on to the city. So let's wait and see. We'll spend that gold on military units. Uh, yeah, I will look elsewhere in the future. I will. I promise I will not settle another city over here in the near in the near future for sure. That I've learned my lesson. <laughs> Let's get on our knees and pray. I don't know to whom. Is there a patron saint of ballistics yet? Okay, so Hunza has again. Eleanor is being shitty about Hunza. So part of the value of her having Hunza as her, uh, her being patron of Hunza, is that if when we declare war on her, it declares war on us. Yeah. That's part of what she's doing. But I just don't... The city-states aren't super aggressive usually, and I don't think it's close enough to our cities that it would actually um, attempt to attack. So she's basically just being a shithead. It does seem to be her vibe. Yeah. Because she thinks we won't conquer her. And I'm going to show her something about that. All right, I am continuing to wipe out all of these apostles. We're actually, we're fighting far enough north now that the uh, the combat is having effects around Plymouth and Sheffield. That's nice. This military engineer is headed up, uh, headed up to help with this stuff. Uh, I don't know when we'll get access to coal. So building a coal mine is a thing that might be might be a little ways off. But we now have access to the range unit that I wanted. So 310. 310. And we don't have quite enough for the other 310. But this is a good 60 damage range unit. Unfortunately, she has now got access to comparable strength melee units, which is really annoying. Yeah. And we need more gold to upgrade our frontline units to not just die. Uh, we fill the, fulfill the city quest, a city state quest for Nan Madal. I guess that's fun. Hunza wants us to construct a preserve. Singapore wants us to construct a preserve. You know, we should probably construct a preserve somewhere. How long would it take you to do that, Dirk Karagazu? Uh, you have one already? Right. This is the one city where I can't do it. Uh, and your sh a shipyard's not any good for you. So, really the only thing to do here is to build units or like a spy. Build me a spy, friend. Let's begin to engage in espionage, which is a thing we can talk about next episode. Okay. What do I want you doing? I guess hanging out near Guelph is actually a reasonable thing for this unit to be up to. Because when it flips, we can attack it with um, fortify. <laughs> Does that help at all? Does that change the... Okay, you know what? Rebellion, slower. <laughs> We're trying. We're doing something. My open borders seem to have run out over here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is run over here and fix this pillage, this, this thing that got damaged by a natural disaster. Our military engineer is headed toward where the war will actually be. We're going to heal up our apostle in this nice, like, frontline location. Okay. So Dermuti is actually fairly advanced. It's doing good work. We should probably build a, a preserve here, I guess. This is kind of a crummy tile. Okay. So when that preserve finishes, unfortunately that's a lot of time, but when that preserve finishes, we'll get an envoy in each of the city-states that we're currently fighting over. So that's fun. 
Uh, you have a little bit more production going on. So you could be the one who builds the preserve instead, or we could build a military unit here and have it run to the front. 62 strength cavalry unit, 65 strength infantry unit. Uh, I guess it would be better to build a line infantry, but that's a lot of turns of production. That is unfortunately probably long enough that it doesn't make sense to do it. So instead, world needs a lot of theater squares. Okay, so. I think we gotta think about um, monetary deals here. Okay. This pike and shot unit has 61 combat strength and is specifically good at fighting horses. If we're gonna declare and start being a, start being, start harassing her stuff, we need to upgrade a few more units. And that is a that is a money problem. We're doing our best to level up our production capacities here. This factory will will make this city by far the most productive city in the in the um, in the empire, and we'll be building military units out of it um, pretty quickly, obviously. But we also want to be able to upgrade our existing units, so we'll make enough money to upgrade this crossbowman next turn. These two, though, are just going to get... They're going to get annihilated in a single turn if they don't have some cover. Or if we don't get to upgrade them. And I'm not sure how, like, how to fix this. I'm not sure what the right way to fix this is. Because I do think it's important that we prioritize the ranged units, the ones that will actually be killing yeah. stuff. We can fall back to... The encampment, of course, and it's really great that that exists. Ugh, this is just this is an awkward time for a war. I agree that it's a good time for a war, that we need to do this, but it's also mm -hmm. a very awkward time for a war. It always is, though. No, it's you're not wrong about that. Let's um. Let's hit and turn here. We'll go to the next turn. We'll get nationalism. We'll get. The per the upgrade for this crossbow, and we'll we'll be in position to start things. <laughs> um, he apparently feels that our two caravels are enough to to satisfy his great white fleet agenda. Cool. Uh, you want to give me some bonus money? Here's the thing, I don't actually want open borders back from you, and I'm not interested in money over time. I need money right this second. Not allowed to click for direct. Okay. Well then, I, yeah, I guess we are doing it over time. I will. I will take money over time if I can't get a better deal. Uh, this is what he offered us initially. It is. It is the thing he is willing to do. I do want your dies again, though. Actually, yeah. Find. Figure this out. Okay, that's fine. The uh, the previous deal that we made for our luxuries it expired. They're only they're only uh, thirty turns in length by default. Which engenders nations, and not the other way around. That's I don't know who Ernest Gellner is. That's certainly a view. All right, so I think we're gonna drop logistics now for um for Grand Armée plus fifty percent production toward industrial era and earlier melee ranged and anti-cavalry units this is for sure the time units have 50 percent less combat strength reduction from being injured is also interesting i think we want to keep wars of religion maybe we don't need bastions so much yeah let's do this all right, so we are we are all teched out for military. We've earned wow. our first great musician, which is interesting. And we're going to take them, but 
honestly, they, they don't do a lot for us at this moment. Uh, Mogadishu declared, okay, Singapore got retaken, which is annoying. So, I think we're going to call it here because we're about to have to make a bunch of decisions. This is this is okay. the turn where we're like committing to everything about the war. All right. We did our we did our, our resetting our government toward the war and yeah, it's going to Ugh, they just moved a bomb a bombard in. What's a bombard's base strength? Okay. So it's actually not it's not that hard for this horseman, this terribly out of date horseman, to fight that cannon. Yeah. Once we can afford the cavalry upgrade, um, we'll be able to actually run wild. But like the pike and shot's going to cause a problem. That city having sixty-seven city strength is going to be a problem. Oh, it has that because it has a military unit standing in it. It's going to be a whole this whole thing is going to be a nightmare. Ugh. All right, she's just, she's just gonna get stronger though. Yeah. Yeah. And we are, we are at a moment like we just developed a new level of violence technology. Mm -hmm. This is the moment to go. We are at a sort of a local maximum as far as ability to destroy her goes. So this is the time I just wish we were a little bit more um, wish we had a little bit more uh, money to put into our military is all. Alright, well. so that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. When you come back Next time, we're going to the fireworks factory. We're going to the. <laughs> we are finally going to get to the fireworks factory. It's going to be a little messy. I guess the best trips to the fireworks factory are, and we'll see you then. <laughs>